Next up is, is Julius Grimm from uh, East Air in Grenoble. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, the topic of my PhD is detection and characterization of seismic signals uh, with dense arrays. So yeah, it is what the title says. Uh, my supervisor is uh, Piero. Yes, a small recap to what I presented at the last workshop, which is um, more or less concluded, is um, where I took a traffic data set from Grenoble from a dust cable, which was running... Do I have a pointer? No. Um, there's the big button in the middle. Ah, no. Anyways, where I have uh, here like a cable and I used some clustering algorithm to find um, temporal patterns of uh, anthropogenic noise sources and um, yes, uh, we um, wrote to a laboratory in Grenoble um, and they shared with us some data about um, flow and speed. So they are mapping all of the city of Grenoble and I'm trying to find some correlations between the patterns I observed and, for example, the positions of vehicles or the emissions. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, since then, I've been working on a data set from Mount Etna that was already um, said you're talking about. Um, and it's really interesting for me because there's a dust cable with around 700 uh, channels, but also 15 geophones, so it, um, and it's full, full of events. So it's really interesting to detect events there, but also to compare the two different measurement systems. And yes, we see really different events. So we have volcano tectonic events. Um, here's a zoom of an of a earthquake. Um, there are transients um, and tremor. Um, we have volcanic explosions, this is from the, from the geophones, and there are a lot of anthropogenic signals, for example, tourist cars, thunderstorms, helicopters. Um, yes, so I tried different detection methods, and I will also quickly explain what I did. So I used the spectral width of the coherence matrix, but also the eigenvectors of the coherent matrix uh, to do some clustering and also some template matching in the time domain. And I try to compare for geophone and for dust data and also characterize like the dust if we need all the channels. Um, yes, so here's the method briefly lined. So for a time window, we compute um, the cross spectral density matrix, or in my case, I use the coherence matrix, and we can dec decompose this into eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And from the distribution of the eigen um, values, we can say something about uh, our sources. So here's an example, um, and above is the DAF record, and below is the spectral width, and you can think of this somehow as a spectrogram of the whole array. So you can see the frequency on the y-axis and the time on the, on the x-axis. And yeah, we see it's really full of events everywhere. Um, Yes, and this line here is quite interesting. So this is from the geophones. And before we didn't have any dust data and afterwards we had dust data. So at some point they, they put on the, um, the generator, which was rotating at around 30 hertz. So then in the coherency, you see a coherent signal of 30 hertz. And right before this uh, yeah, kind of resonant is from a helicopter. Um, yes, so one really simple thing that you could do with this is you, you could just, in between a certain frequency band, you just take the average and then if you have low values, you have a seismic event and you can detect it this way. This is a really simple way to detect seismic events. Um, Allah. Yes, so for example, here is the seismic event over there. And you can do this for sp different frequency bands. For example, this is for, for high frequencies. So this is probably anthropogenic noise. Um, yes, and then we did like a lot of experiments on how we can downsample the fiber because we have 700 channels, but we see the signal as almost all of the channels. So we did some experiment where we use different downsampling factors and we computed these curves and we take the ratios and we can see that if we go down with the, um, if we downsample the, the, um, the dust cable, then also the detection power goes down, but probably a factor of 10 is still pretty okay to, to detect signals this way. Um, and it would save a lot of storage. 
Um, and also we looked at differences between the, the geophone and the dust. So for example, for the dust, it's really less saturated at higher frequencies, but also um, we see that for some events, we have a higher frequency content in the, in the dust than in the geophones. And we also observed some I try to go back some uh, spectral lines, um, but these were due to processing. Um, then something else what I tried, then I didn't look at the spectral width, but at the eigenvectors. So I took the first eigenvector that belonged to the strongest eigenvalue, and uh, this somehow characterizes the source. So for example, here's an example for volcanic explosions. These are um, indexes for different events. And for example, these three events here where you see the row, um, these are volcanic explosion and they have a really high, uh, really low cross correlation with all the other events, but with each other they have a high cross correlation. So if we apply this method and we do a dendrogram, then we can find clusters where we would find a cluster which only contains these volcanic explosions. And then what we could do also with a cluster like this, we could take a, a meteoroid and then use this as a template to, to search in our space for events. So for example, this is done by the trace here, which looks when we have a detection, when we have no detection. And when we do this for different clusters with different events, we get a different um, result. So they don't detect the same thing. OK, um, did I skip a skip? A? Ah, la, la. No. Um, yes, then I also did template matching in the time domain because this clustering worked extremely well for volcanic explosions. But for example, for the tremor, it just doesn't work at all or not really well. It's very messy. And maybe it's because the tremor actually comes from a larger area or from a patch. So it's not so simple to find it in this method. But here I used with template matching in the, in the time domain. And for example, here, um, yeah, this is... Uh, I just took one of these events as a template, and then I scanned it, and I compared it both for the geophone and for the DAS. And yeah, here's like a quick table for one hour. But basically with the DAS, since we have so much more channels, we in general have like a lower um, standard deviation, and we can detect more events above the threshold. Um, yes, so these are some of the references I used. Um, and yeah, quick note, so, so G had said that he has like a, a lot of data and looks for people that would like to work on it. And for me, it's a bit the opposite, like I'm working on methods and I'm looking for interesting data to work on. So yes, there could be a potential match. But also, if you have some uh, interesting data, um, I would be happy to, to try my algorithms on them. Uh, thanks for your attention. <laughs>